Welcome to this uh, conversation around self-pleasure tonight. Um, and um, I want to share a little bit about who I am and why I'm talking about this tonight. So I'm going to talk about why self-pleasure, what are the benefits of it, and what are the possibilities as well. So I'm here sharing this because I work as a sex and pleasure coach. Welcome to all you lovely people that are joining me. So I work as a sex, pleasure and intimacy coach and I've had many, many years supporting people in, um, in, in, in discovering what's possible with self-pleasure, um, using it as a way to overcome sexual problems, but also um, as a way to reach more of their sexual potential. And that's what I really love to support people to do is live their potential both in sex and relationships, but also in the rest of their lives. So why self-pleasure? So this is such an important conversation. Hello, more gorgeous people. Um, this is such an important conversation because there's such a taboo around this area for sure. Um, and typically self-pleasure would be called masturbation. Um, and masturbation, the actual root of the word masturbation means to defile oneself, so I read. Um, and it can often come laden with um, history, um, feelings of shame, experiences that have maybe felt um, not right or, or you're not sure if, if what you do is okay because um, it's often so hidden um, and no one talks about it. And so it also over the years, it can become a very functional, mechanical experience. And people I work with often describe it as quite an empty experience. So I like to, and the other thing about masturbation is it tends to be very goal focused. So the objection is getting often as fast as possible to having an orgasm or an ejaculation. And so I like to use the word self-pleasure instead because it opens up possibilities. So self-pleasure is about discovering pleasure for yourself in whatever way that looks like. So I'm gonna to talk to you tonight about some of the benefits of self-pleasure and then some of the possibilities as well. So please feel free to put any questions in the chat. I won't answer them till towards the end, but if you've got any questions at all, um, please feel free to, to, to message me. Um, and also, if you've got any questions afterwards you don't feel comfortable about putting in the chat box, you, could, box, you can always message me privately as well. So I just think as well, the little thing to say about self-pleasure is, um, it's, it helps us as well. There's so many benefits. So me and my colleague Sue, um, Sue Newsom is a dear colleague of mine. You can get to her website at suenewsom.com. We were discussing, we did some workshops around self-pleasure and we were discussing the reasons why people self-pleasure. And often it's just about pleasure or stress relief. So we, did, we, we talk through the many possibilities of why people might self-pleasure. And we've got four categories, which I want to talk to you about and share with you. So... First of all, um, self-pleasure, as we explore pleasure, uh, is a way to explore our pleasure. And that might be um, very simply just to have a pleasurable experience, but it also might be to learn about what is possible for our pleasure. Because in our self-pleasure, we often, when we masturbate, we often learn to masturbate quickly and quietly, because when we're kids, we don't want to get caught. Um, and so we take those patterns sometimes into our adult lives. So it's a really good place to look at how do I do my pleasure and how might I do it differently? It's a place of unlearning as well as learning. Um, so it helps us to take responsibility for our pleasure. I feel like our body is this most incredible musical instrument and we can play amazing songs from it, but we need to practice, we need to explore. So I really encourage you to take time to practice and explore your pleasure and create space for that. It helps us also to develop our pleasure capacity. So for example, um, if you think about our pleasure capacity, our pleasure is like a muscle, um, it's like about this much, but actually with time and practice, then we can increase the capacity for the pleasure that we can experience. We can exercise this pleasure muscle and feel more pleasure. So for example, you may have parts of your body where you don't have much sensation. And there can be many different reasons why that might be. Um, but if you spend time there and attention there and over, uh, and, and over periods of time, we can enhance the pleasure in those areas. Sensitivity can come back if there is none. And so we really can like fine tune this incredible musical instrument so that we can play many, many songs on it rather than just one, which is often what we do when we masturbate. Um, also, um, it also builds trust in your body and your body's response. Um, because so, um, so that we know what we like more, we're more in tune with that. So we, it might be, you know, people often compare 
self-pleasure to partner pleasure. And like, you know, self-pleasure is less than partner pleasure. Self-pleasure is something only I, I only do when I don't have a partner. Um, and actually, I, I'd, I'd say stop comparing them because they're two totally different things. They're two totally different things. And there's so much that you can learn and experience and explore in your self-pleasure that's a bit like your training ground that can feed your relationship with your lover's partners as well. So first reason is pleasure. Second is medicine. I feel like our self-pleasure is its own inbuilt medicine cabinet. So for example, if you are feeling tired, if you are, um, uh, one of my teachers once said, never waste an orgasm. You know, if you're feeling like you are not being able to get to sleep, if you've got period pains, if you've got headaches, backaches, I've had so many people share stories of how self-pleasuring has helped to relieve that or, or even heal that. Um, and so it also, um, research shows that regular self-pleasure helps to build our immune system and can help with our general overall health and vitality. So if you look at the research in self-pleasure, so it says that people who self-pleasure tend to have, um, are, are better, uh, tend to be healthier, happier, have um, better immune systems. Um, and this is people who have better relationships as well. So, you know, even if you're in relationship, self-pleasure's absolutely got its place. It can benefit for so many reasons. For example, if you've got different levels of desire is one reason, um, that's another conversation. So the third reason you might self-pleasure, and this to me is the biggest area and the most exciting area that we never discuss and people don't know about. And that's what Sue and I called healing and transformation. And so there's many levels to this. So I'm just going to give you some examples which might inspire you. Um, so for example, if you've had negative sexual experiences, self-pleasure um, can be a really great place to, to um, rewire our sort of um, our, our sexual stories and imprints. So for example, um, you know, one, it's just our training ground. We can learn so much that can prepare us and, and, and enhance our relationships with others. Um, but for example, um, you know, you might be somebody who has had negative comments or something from a partner in the past around body image, for example. Um, you know, I hear that so many times where negative comments from partners have left imprints. So really um, creating a space for healing around that. It can help to um, heal body confidence. Um, so for example, I've had so many women who I've encouraged to do breast massage and they maybe didn't like their breasts. They felt they didn't get any sensation in their breasts. And through the breast massage pleasure practice, that's totally transformed their relationship with their breasts. But it could be for any parts of our bodies. It can also help in overcoming sexual concerns. So for example, if you um, uh, can't orgasm, if you have challenges around premature uh, ejaculation or erection challenges, self-pleasure is a really important place to connect and listen into your body and explore how your pleasure works. Because often we don't question how it works until it stops working. And, and then we're like, what's happening? And it's such a great place to get in touch with your arousal, um, your sens sensitivity, your sensations, and how you can cultivate that in your body through different things like breath and sound and movement. So it can also help um, to, um, you know, we can actually have self-pleasure practice. It doesn't always have to be about pleasure in the sense it might be focused on healing. So for example, just giving yourself a lovely self-massage can be nice and pleasurable. Um, and and um, you know, we often look to others to do that for us, but there's a lot we can do for ourselves in that way. And also our pleasure practice doesn't have to be pretty. Um, one of my favorite teachers, Annie Sprinkle, she says, um, she talks about having an angergasm. So if you're feeling angry and you know, what a way to take it into your self-pleasure, build up the energy and release that through an orgasm, for example. So there's so many different ways we can explore our pleasure. Um, I think there's certain patterns that self-pleasure can be particularly useful in as well. For example, if somebody is a people pleaser and is used to, or they're used to putting their partner's pleasure before themselves, self-pleasure can be a really great place to practice um, getting to know your body and putting yourself first. It's also a great place if, for example, you have challenges with pleasure. For example, if um, when you're having pleasure, you feel guilty, for example, which that's a very common one. 
um, creating space for your pleasure can be very, very healing. It can be challenging at first, um, but it can also be very healing as well. Um, you know, I've worked with people and, and done trainings where we've had to do things like self-pleasure every day for six weeks, two months. And the learning that happens in those spaces and the healing that happens in all aspects of life, not just within the self-pleasure arena, is super powerful. Um, what else can self-pleasure do? So also, yeah, so if, for example, um, depending on your beliefs, if you, um, you work with the chakras, for example, you can build up sexual energy and channel it into your chakras to clear blockages or to open your chakra systems. And then there's all sorts of practices like the jade egg, which you can use in a, in a self-pleasure way, which can help to, you can learn how to circulate your sexual energy and to um, become sort of more adept at that. Um, and the sort of jade egg practices and the healing practices around that are, can be incredibly pleasurable and very powerful for healing many of the things that I've talked about. It can also be used for visualizing new possibilities for yourself. Um, so for example, um, I've had clients had a lot of success, say for example, when they've had erection challenges, um, really having um, using self-pleasure as a place where they would see themselves um, in, in the place they want to be, where they're happy and healthy and fulfilled in their sex life. Or if they're, for example, somebody who's quite passive in their sex life, they might use um, visualization to explore what it's like to be more, um, more uh, coming forward, um, being more initiatory in their sex lives. So there's so many different ways in the healing and transformation way that we can use our self-pleasure as a practice and a space that we can use for our own healing. Um, then finally, consciousness, how we can use self-pleasure to enhance our consciousness. So if, as we get to learn to play this incredible instrument that we have of this body, and we can learn to play with our breath and our sexual energy and channel it and circulate it in different ways, um, beyond the sort of performance model where often our sexual pleasure is quite tension-based and just focused around the genitals. Um, and again, nothing wrong with that, but it becomes limiting. And I'll do, a web, I'll do a Facebook Live on the performance to pleasure model. But if we open up to what's possible truly in our bodies with our pleasure, we can actually access some incredible states like um, uh, one of my teachers, Joseph Kramer, would call it erotic trance states. Um, Annie Sprinkle, she'd call it meditation, sort of a, con a, co a, um, a mix of masturbation and meditation. Um, and so then you can just be placed, you know, for me, get into places where you really have no thoughts and you're just in the deepest relaxation. So there's many things that you can explore there as well. And of course, all of these you can explore with lovers and partners. Um, but I feel it's really valuable to have space in your life and how often your self-pleasure is going to possibly go up and down, but to really have space to explore this for yourself. And then when you meet with a lover or partner, you've got so much more to share and explore and you've got so much more self-knowledge and you're just more connected to your own innate erotic intelligence. And I really believe we have such a powerful innate erotic wisdom inside of us, but we need to create space to listen to it. And actually, when we tap into that, 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 that will guide everything. Um, you know, people often come to me asking for them to teach them techniques and techniques absolutely help. But if we can really tune into this incredible erotic wisdom and intelligence we have, that's the best guide. So I just want to share a little bit about um, um, how we might um, do this. But first, I'm just going to check some of the questions because I've got some uh, just if there's anything, so somebody saying um, a very important conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Some lovely hellos from people. Hello to all of you amazing people. Um, um, Sarah's recommended Vagina by Virginia um, Naomi Wolf. It's an incredible book detailing why we experience different types of orgasms. Yeah, that's a, a fascinating topic, and I really recommend that book as well. Um, it's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, any questions, let me know. So a feel in terms of how we can access this um, is through creating space for time and practice. So often we wait to, to, to masturbate or self-pleasure, um, we wait till when we're aroused or we're in the mood. And for a lot of people, if we wait for that, we're never gonna get there. And so, you know, there's two different types of desire. So some people have more spontaneous desire where desire is just there all the time or it just happens naturally and spontaneously. They don't need anything to stimulate them in, in that sense. It might just be a little look or a thought. And then the other type of desire is what they call responsive. 
And responsive desire is that we need something to happen for us to feel our desire um, and for our, for our arousal to get started. And the sort of, there doesn't seem to be much study on this and the indications are that um, more people of the female uh, gender will experience the more responsive desire than the spontaneous. And some people are a mix, but we see the spontaneous as like the gold standard. If we haven't just, if we're not just experiencing desire, then there's something up with us. But actually, we're often not experiencing desire because our desire style is more responsive, but also it can be for many reasons. We're exhausted, we're tired, we're busy, all these different things. So it's really important to create some space for you to experience and explore your pleasure. And so it just might be 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, and you know, maybe some of the things that I've shared with you today have inspired you to consider what you might explore in a different way. I'll also put a link to a webinar I did, which is on YouTube, and that's an hour and a half webinar on this topic, which really goes in depth um, to different types of tools and things that we can play with in our self-pleasure. Um, but just actually exploring our bodies without any goal, where the only goal actually is pleasure. It's not about intensity or orgasms or trying for orgasms, just exploring different types of touch. Um, and just creating that space and time. Many people, of my, many of my clients I've sent to do this where they just were like, I'm, it's not gonna work for me. And they've come back to me so surprised that when they've created that time and really created that container where you've got the space and time, not where you've got a quick 15 minutes. I mean, that can work, but I'm inviting you to really create some time for yourself. They're really surprised at how much pleasure that they can experience. And remember, this is learning. So there's times when you explore um, this type of self-pleasure and it may be frustrating, it may be boring. You, you, know, you, you, you might not enjoy it, but you might learn something and there's other times you'll have an amazing time. So see it as practice and learning time. So really give yourself the time and space to do that. So um, I've got um, a really great question here. Oh, uh, Sue, thank you so much. Yeah, Betty Dodson, Sex for One is a fabulous book around this as well. It's the sort of the first ever book that was really written about this. Um, Betty Dodson um, is, is a real pioneer in my field. So thank you for that. Um, so Julie, thank you. How do you get out of the negative comments that have been said out of your head? I struggle with this. And when I try to self-pleasure, this can creep in and sabotage it. Okay, really, really great questions. So first of all, I think it's really good to do some sort of work around those comments and beliefs to really examine them. And so, you know, to ask, are, they, are these true? Um, because many, many times, most of the time I would say when I've worked with clients around this, then they're not. Um, and they've been said in heated moments and different things, but they really leave an imprint in our systems. And so sometimes we don't want to look at them because we're worried about them. And you know, what if they really are true? So I would really say create some time to examine those beliefs and comments. Um, because, um, and, and then what would be more of a true statement instead? So sometimes changing that comment can help. Just in the terms of examining it, it's like you start to turn the volume down on it. It may not disappear instantly, but it doesn't hold the power over you that it does when you don't really look at it and examine it. Um, and then, um, like I say, just mind maybe finding a different statement, um, a statement to um, replace that. So for example, I feel this about myself or um, I know I'm this. So sometimes just that positive affirmation to, or just simply things like, um, you know, I've had clients who just say something like, I'm good enough. I know that. Um, that can help. But I would also say another thing to do is often we look to changing our thoughts when often what happens is our thoughts get the grip on us and it's more about changing our state of being. So for example, some of you know that I'm a really great fan of just shaking the body. Um, it's a really lovely Qigong practice of just, um, just um, bouncing and just shaking and shaking and shaking. And sometimes just getting up and moving the body can help shift our focus away from up here and down into the body. And the other things um, is breath and sound. So just taking some deep breaths, making some sound can really help to sort of de-stress the nervous system and bring us more present. And in that can help just take some of the attention away from the thoughts and taking our attention down to what's happening in the body. 
So it's a practice. It's something, you know, I used to deal with a lot of negative thoughts and it's a practice. There's no shortcuts. It's discipline and practice. And each time if that thought comes up, keep coming back to what feels good. Keep coming back to pleasure. Do something different can really help in my, my, my view. So in my experience and that of my clients as well. So I hope that's helpful. Um, so, um, Another question, do you think, feel it's okay for your partner to watch you during self-pleasuring? So I think it's an entirely individual choice. So thank you for the question, Sarah, because that's a really great question. Um, and, um, you know, for some people, that might be what they want to do all the time. For others, it feels like a really private thing and they don't want to do that. Um, for others, it can be a really nice part of erotic play. Um, to um, it might be that you watch each other together or one watches and the other um, while well, the other self pleasures so it's a really and, and that can be for many people a really um, uh, erotic experience and can feel like a really um, vulnerable actually um, but but uh, a real gift to share that with a partner and um, but it can feel very vulnerable when it's been something that you've been doing on your own for many times and I think it's about you know, it's about what's the intention behind it as well. You know, does it feel something that you feel comfortable with? So I think it's really good to chat and explore about that. So I hope that helps with answering the question. But, you know, absolutely feel it uh, can be a totally healthy um, and, and love the beautiful thing to do. Sarah, um, uh, second different Sarah asks, can you recommend any specific breathing? Yeah, there's lots of different breathing practices that you can use. Um, I would say what's really good is um, in terms of sort of spreading the pleasure and experiencing more pleasure is lots of um, deep breathing. Um, and, you know, because so many people in their pleasure, they build up their pleasure, they get sort of tense and the breath gets shallow and then the breathing gets shallow. And often people even hold their breath as they get more excited. And so it's good to just notice what your specific breathing patterns are. And if you're carrying a lot of tension, and you're holding your breath or shallow breathing, simply the first stage would be just to bring in some deep breathing. Um, and and you, it's a bit like um, driving a car at first when you're checking the wing mirror and things, you'll forget. So it's just like at different opportunities, bring the deep breath back in. My favorite breath um, at the moment, because there's so many different types, is what's called the microcosmic orbit. It's a Taoist practice. And it's about pulling the sexual energy and the sexual arousal up from the genitals. So you start at the perineum, breathing up the back um, to the crown and then coming down the front. So it's a, a, an inhale up the back and an exhale down the front. And this can be really good in certain specific situations. So for example, if a man is really feeling um, ready to ejaculate, bringing that, doing that breathing can help to dissipate some of the heat and the hot energy and help to cool down. Um, but it's just a really great way to, um, the circulating of the energy can just get into a very sort of, you can play with it. So you can do it in a more <sighs> fiery way, or you can do it much more of a slower. <sighs> you can even hold the breath at the top and then exhale. So really play with it. With the breath, it's a tool. Um, so maybe I'll do something on that sometime as well, because that's a great question. So I hope that answers your question, Sarah. Come back if there's any more. Sue says self-pleasuring in a mirror is, a fun, is fun or using erotic literature or erotic art. Absolutely. There's a whole host of toys out there um, and, uh, and great resources. Um, and it can be very healing self-pleasuring in front of a mirror, actually, um, because um, People have an expectation of how they might be and look and different things. Um, and actually, one of the, there's a brilliant article, gosh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he said, literally self-pleasuring in the mirror, you literally come into yourself, quite literally. Um, and there's something about when people see themselves in that aroused state, they can be fearful of it or worry about what they look like in terms of partners and things as well. I've had people who've really healed um, body image things around that and also helped them overcome sexual concerns. So thanks for, for bringing that up, Sue. Um, Emma recommends um, Sarah Pe Payton's book, The Resonant Self, Guides People to Heal the Negative and Hostile Amygdala. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. I will check that out. I've not heard that book. Um, and her website has um, free resources to help overcome the savage default mode network explains about the brain and gives concrete practices to find liberation. Amazing. Thank you, Emma. I'll certainly check that out. 
um, and thank you. Yes, so great. So I'm gonna um, just, um, sh I'll post the links to, that's all the questions I've got for now. I'll post the links to the um, self-pleasure webinar and then there's a 10 minute video I did called Your Erotic Toolkit. Um, and it was a lecture that I did and it just gives you some tips on really quick things you can do to introduce your self-pleasure practice and why. So just things like um, breath, sound, movement, slowing down. But these are really powerful tools. I really encourage you to give yourself some time and space to explore them and not to expect quick fix and immediate res results. These things work best with time and practice for sure. So before we finish, I just want to mention a little bit about my new online course, which starts on June the 11th called V Life, V standing for vulva, vagina. Um, and it's a course to um, empower, educate and inspire um, women with a holistic approach to pelvic health, well-being and pleasure. And it really distills the sort of essence of my 15 years of this exploration to help women. And also, um, so it's about helping us to love our vaginas. It's helping us to feel empowered around our pleasure, to learn about our pleasure. So we're going to go into our anatomy and so much deeper than I've covered tonight. We're also going to learn about orgasms, how to communicate out about our pleasure, um, lovemaking, um, uh, penetration. Um, we're going to learn about how to have an empowered pelvic exam. Um, how to um, look after our pelvic floor health, even, even, either preventative or if you have pelvic floor issues, then what's possible for your healing because um, we've got such negative messages out there. Um, and it begins on the, 7th, uh, sorry, the 11th of June. It's 7 p.m. every Tuesday for four weeks. And we're going to have um, a lot of um, wonderful things in there, practices, teachings. There's going to be Facebook Live in between um, the, the teaching. Um, and then we're going to bring an amazing community of women together to explore this area. So whether you've got problems or challenges there or you just want to deepen your connection and feel more in your power in this part of your body, then this is a course for you. And I've got a special offer till the end of May where the course is £175 um, for the whole four weeks with all the bonuses and the practices. So I'll post a link to the course below. Um, and if you sign up to a, with a friend, you both um, get a £25 discount as well. Because um, I really want to create an amazing massive community of women to share this information with. Um, and so next week, um, so, so any questions about that, let me know. Next week, I'm not going to be doing a Facebook Live because I'm away, but then I'm going to do two more the following weeks. I'm going to do one on communication and intimacy, which is a massive topic, and, and another one on why look after your pelvic health. So if you're watching this and it's not live and you've got questions, please post them below and I'll keep an eye out for any questions or comments and respond to those over the next um, few days. Um, and please feel free to share this with anyone who you might feel will benefit from it as well, um, because this is such an important topic and I really hope this has inspired you to think differently about self-pleasure. Um, so thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.